Let's build a habitat for the Wolverine from the newest Eurasia Animal Pack. Today we are back in the Elm Hill City Zoo where we'll try to build something inspired by the natural habitat of the Wolverines. Those animals were very highly requested so I just had to build something special for them. And I hope you will enjoy it! Hello guys, this is Cesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. It's so good to have you here because today we'll build a habitat for a very special animal that was very highly requested by the community and is finally added to the game with the newest Eurasia animal pack and I am talking here of course about the Wolverine. I'm not surprised at all that many people wanted to see this animal in the game. It is very interesting, it is very nice looking but also very like feisty. Uh, it you can build very interesting habitats for it because it is both a climbing animal, it is a borrowing animal, so there is a lot of things to consider while building for it. And of course because all of that I was really excited to like design and build this habitat for it. I just had to add a suitable place for it in the Elm Hill City Zoo and I think that I found the perfect place, but more on that later. Uh, this is the second episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo when it comes to uh, adding the new animals from the Eurasia Animal Pack. I already added the mute swans to our zoo, so in case you guys missed it, uh, I'll put the link in the description and on the screen right now uh, to this video because the new uh, pond that I've built for those guys in the zoo looks really nice i really like this habitat especially that i had quite of a limited time for to build this during the early access time and uh, it turned out really nice so yeah the wolverine is the second animal from the eurasia animal pack that we'll be adding to the elm hill city zoo uh, what i forgot to mention in the last video uh, is that most of those animals will be actually added because i think that this uh, pack is just perfect for the elm hill city zoo we are building this temperate zoo in a central central part of the Europe and so uh, those animals are just perfect and in the near future I also plan to add the boars the wild boars and the visons to our zoo uh, so we will continue building this little temperate section that we have going on here so basically uh, if you are wondering when where this habitat will be positioned if you have been following this zoo for a while, you probably know that we have this little like temperate taiga section going on. Uh, and lately we've been building this trail that uh, includes animals from both Europe and North America. Uh, and in there we have the red fox, we have the raccoons and the skunks. And we also have the red deer, the previous anniversary animal. And we are building this habitat today for the wolverine next to the red deer. Years. Uh, in this exact area we'll also have as I mentioned the wild boars and also the visons. Uh, the visons will have a big enclosure that I already have some ideas for and I think it will look really nice uh, so just wait for that. When it comes to the rest of the animals from the pack I will definitely add the takin but it will be slightly in a different area. Uh, I will definitely add the sloth bear when we'll be building an area for the bears in the zoo. Uh, the Saiga, I was like debating if I should add it or not and I thought that if I will find a place for it, I will definitely add it somewhere, uh, but maybe it's it won't be my priority right now. And the Herman Sturtis, which is one of my favorite exhibit animals, will also be added to the reptile house in the future. Uh, so yeah, probably all of those animals will find their home there in the LBO City Zoo, uh, but it will happen gradually. Maybe I won't be adding them all at once right now. We'll probably Probably be going back to some previous builds, <clears throat> the reptile house, and doing it, you know, from time to time and so on. But let's go back to our Wolverine habitat and let's talk about the inspiration for it. Uh, I haven't seen too many uh, Wolverine habitats in my life, to be honest. I saw one in Tier Park Berlin, but I don't think that the Tier Park Berlin houses the Wolverine anymore. They had some different animals in that cage, but if you Google for 
it. You will see that previously there was a Wolverine living there. And I also wanted to build something more like interesting that, than a huge metal cage. Uh, so I was googling for some inspiration, looking for, you know, looking at different Wolverine habitats. And I found something promising that was from the Zoo Montana from the United States. Uh, and But the photos were not at the best quality. You couldn't see much from this. So I decided to go to, to go to the Google Maps as I often do because some of the zoos have those virtual walks that you can do, like go through the entire zoo and look from uh, the enclosures from different angles and so on. Uh, and I wanted to go through the zoo Montana, but unfortunately you cannot go through the entire zoo. Uh, I couldn't find the Wolverine habitat there. Probably it is a newer habitat and uh, the Google Maps for the zoo was, wasn't like updated, but I found something really cool accidentally. Uh, I found a Siberian tiger enclosure for this zoo and it had this like really interesting looking uh, viewing gallery that we are building right now. We've been actually building it from the beginning of the video. It was quite a lot of work, but I think that this whole structure would fit so perfectly to the Elm Hill City Zoo that I really wanted to build something like this. I love the idea of the wooden structure and the windows that the guests would use to look at the animals just looked really nice so I decided to recreate that and this is what I went for. When it comes to the enclosure alone I didn't use any inspiration I just decided to build something that I thought would be suitable for those guys because the the photos that I found on Google didn't inspire me at all. Those habitats for the wolverines they're often really plain really like empty with some logs for them to climb on and that's it. Uh, but I wanted to build something more inspired by their natural habitat so what I wanted to is build something inspired by the taiga biome like Scandinavian or anything like that with a lot of pines. Uh, I came up with the idea of making like a little mountain creek with small waterfalls so I really wanted to incorporate that. Uh, it's been a while since I did something like this. I used to make more enclosures like this with waterfalls and water features and I stopped. I don't know why <laughs> but I really decided I really wanted to go back to my roots sort of and do something like that again. I don't know if you guys remember my um, B habitat from this zoo because this habitat when I finished it I just thought oh it looks a bit like a beaver habitat that we already did. Of course this habitat doesn't have the big water section uh, as the one for the deep beavers does like duh <laughs> the beavers they need it they have to swim and so on. Uh, but the whole idea of the small waterfalls, it's a bit more like a hilly enclosure with uh, a lot of different trees and so on, is really similar to that one. And I really wanted to utilize the fact that the wolverines uh, can climb in a game, that they are really good climbers. Uh, they in a real life have, have those like really big paws with the claws and they can climb on a very steep surfaces like cliffs and mountains and so on. So I really wanted to use that. That's why there will be a lot of rocky elevations in this uh, in this enclosure. And in the end, the elevation in the habitat is probably my favorite thing about it, along with the waterfalls. But uh, the waterfalls are there because of the elevation. So uh, yeah, this habitat overall, I really like it because I think that it both looks like something you would see in normal zoo, but also it looks really natural. And I think that it. It sort of looks like a natural habitat of the of the wolverine being like a bit taiga inspired and so on. Uh, I hope you guys will agree with me. <laughs> and, uh, I am not a wolverine specialist or anything like that, but I hope that this enclosure will just work for them. Like to make sure that it is more realistic. I made sure that the fences are quite high. Those animals can jump. Uh, they can also climb, as I as I told you. I decided to use the fences that I already created in this zoo and I used quite a bit in this area of the zoo uh, for example for the red foxes but I still decided to add like electric hot wires on uh, on the top of it to prevent the animals from escaping I also knew that the concrete like uh, base of the 
uh, of the fence is really important because those animals can dig. So to prevent them digging under the fence, uh, there should be some like concrete or anything like that. Uh, I also made sure to add the uh, electric wires on the rock uh, formations that are surrounding the whole enclosure, uh, again, to prevent them from escaping uh, and so on. Uh, what we also will do in the second part of the video, we'll build a shelter for them. Uh, we'll make sure that they each have their own own separate like night quarter like stall or anything like that uh, so that they can be separated so uh, you know they don't need to sleep together if they don't want to uh, those are solitary animals uh, but they are often kept in zoos in pairs so this is what I went for uh, if something we can always like you know trade one or anything uh, but uh, they have two separate like places to sleep in there uh, that can be divided and uh, yeah this is what I went for as well but this will all come in the later part of the video and right now we are working on the elevation as I told you guys and we'll be working on our waterfalls. Uh, so to do the waterfalls I use the glass barrier trick. Uh, so basically you need to do the elevation first then dig out the terrain that you want to use for your like creek or river or anything like that. Uh, then add the barrier and make sure that you have this option turned on i don't really know what's the name of this option but the option that allows you to like lower the uh, poles of the barrier like so you need to do that first and then you are able to lower the top of the barrier so it is like almost like almost at the same level as the water uh, you cannot like delete the water after you do that because you won't be able to put it back and you will have to make the barrier high again and you know the drill uh, but to uh, sort of fake this like cascading water uh, this is the best thing you can do this is the easiest thing that you can do and and after that in the later part of the video we'll add a lot of those vfx's those smaller ones for the fountains i like to use those ones for those smaller waterfalls because i think that the default waterfall vfx's they are sort of like too intense for those little waterfalls and it looks kind of like ridiculous that this small creek would like you know produce so many foam and so many like splashes or anything and so I like to use this technique of adding the small VFXs and blending them in between like the rocks so it sort of looks like the water is more like dripping in between the rocks and it looks really cool of course you will see that all in the in the cinematics by the end of the video most of the ground of this habitat will be covered by the taiga and temperate rocks. Uh, this is because I really wanted to make this look like very mountainous, that they are actually living high in the mountains and, you know, the hilly mountains are often very rocky <laughs> so this is what something what we went for we also added a lot of those rock piles smaller rock piles for uh, the added textures to make it look more interesting uh, those rock piles are in the workshop both the big ones and the small ones uh, as well as the rock formations that we used around it the, the whole habitat like the rock walls this is all in the workshop because i still get some uh, questions from you guys if i can upload those but they're already there so you can just go to the workshop find me and look at the things that I uploaded and download them and after adding all of those rocks I will do some climbing for them I will add some dead trees and also some custom uh, like climbing frames it's been a while since I've built some climbing frame in this game uh, I must say it was quite a challenge because uh, I don't quite like using the default climbing frames uh, from the habitat tab I actually like to use the normal like construction pieces to build the climbing frames. I think that they look much more realistic this way. Uh, so I am often searching for those wooden pieces that are actually climbable. And I must say that recently Planet Zoo is not adding too many uh, climbable objects to the game. I don't know why we used to get them a lot in the like older DLCs, but right now we don't kind of get them. Uh, I guess that this is because uh, there was a lot of like escaping 
issues <laughs> because people were using them for building and then the animals were climbing out and so on. But right now we can actually turn off the climbing, right, for, for different objects. So please, Frontier, if you are listening, uh, maybe some more like climbing objects for the animals. That would be really greatly appreciated. I especially would love more like a natural looking climbing things for the animals and uh, like more dead trees, like logs and stuff like that, because uh, we actually have those long, like broken, like or dead trees and they're not climbable. And this is such a shame. I think I already spoke about this in some of my videos. Uh, I think that if they would be climbable, that would be so more, much more realistic because I think that Zeus normally use like dead trees and like cut out branches and stuff like that for the animals to climb on. So uh, that would be so, so awesome. But yeah, I just hear some of the logs for them. Uh, I also made sure to uh, create some custom enrichment. I think that custom enrichment is something that sort of brings your uh, habitats to another level. Although the animals technically won't be able to use it. It looks good. It looks like you make sure that they are well carried off and so on. The enrichment items in Planet Zoo, they're rather limited, I would say. There's quite a lot of the enrichment items, but after building like a big zoo, they get a bit like repetitive because the similar animals can reuse only similar objects. Uh, so whenever you see the ungulate, for example, enclosure, you often see the same set of the enrichment. The same goes for the cats, the same goes for carnivores, like the wolverine here. So so uh, this time I decided to build something custom, not much, but still something, some hanging enrichment, like a hanging ball, like a hanging something, also a, a little log. And also I created this like hanging tube that uh, the keepers would just, you know, hide the foot in so that the wolverines would have to climb on the trees to, you know, just uh, find the foot. Uh, this is something really like typical for Zeus, like hiding the foot all around the enclosures for the animals to find it. This is really enriching for the animals because they basically have to work for their foods. They need to find it, they need to sniff for it, they need to climb for it, they need to do sort of different stuff for it. So they are not bored, they have something to do, there is something like exciting for them and they always get this award for doing stuff. Uh, the Like the best reward for the animal is, uh, is food probably. I know this from training with my dog because she would just do anything for food. Like all the new tricks are super easy when I have her favorite snacks. When I have some that she's not crazy about, she will she will do a trick, but sort of like, okay, I will do it, but leave me alone. <laughs> but if I have something that she really likes, she's super excited and just, you know, makes those tricks like one by one. And this is the same when it comes to animals like Wolverine and stuff like that. If they have something that they really like, they would really work for it. And this is what the zookeepers use in the zoos. So while building those habitats, I am always either watching other content creators, uh, like watching their series, their videos, and so on, or I am listening to podcasts or listening to the music, but mainly podcasts. And my favorite podcast is hands down the one from the San Diego Zoo. They share so many fun facts from the zoo and also so many information about the conservation of the uh, endangered animals and also some, you know, behind the scenes stuff from working with animals and they talk a lot about enrichment so uh, yeah from now on I will definitely pay more attention to that because if I am trying to you know do those more realistic habitats and, and improve in that matter uh, I should simply do what real zoos do uh, what good real zoos do and <laughs> provide those animals with a lot of enrichment by the way it's such a shame that Planet Zoo is not adding any more enrichment items to the game anymore. They used to add some in the previous DLCs, but right now the animals just get the enrichment that is already in the game. Um, they don't get any like new specific enrichment for them. That's a shame because I think that there's a lot of like typical enrichment items uh, still missing. But of course, there's nothing we can do about this. Uh, I'm sure that the animations, like doing them for those new animals uh, is already out of work. And then animating the them interacting with new enrichment items is uh, like additional work for them. So I can forgive them. But if we would get a new enrichment items from time to time, this would be just amazing. 
So after adding those climbing frames and Richmond items and so on, uh, I went on to add a lot of plants. I still wanted to make it look something from the taiga biome, so I, I really paid attention to what plants I am choosing for this habitat. Uh, I also added the hollow logs, and the hollow logs are actually not by me. I feel like hollow logs is something that could easily be used for the wolverines, uh, that they will sleep in there. And I used the blueprint here from the workshop by Z sh place uh, it was really popular back uh, when the uh, arid animal pack was released it had so many downloads zsh place in general is just killing it with his san bernardino zoo i am sure you all know this series it is so huge right now on youtube and i am not surprised by it at all because the builds the editing this is all so so amazingly good uh, this is one of my favorite series right now hands down and uh, I know that a lot of you guys are watching it so you know what I am talking about. He really proves that you don't need to spend like hours and days like I do <laughs> on those uh, on those habitats to uh, you know make your zoo it look really amazing in general. This habitat in here it took me I don't know five evenings to build uh, or four or something like that but it was so much time and effort and I am sometimes I am efficient with my builds but sometimes when I don't have a clear inspiration it can take some time because I do a lot of those trials I just delete things I add things I delete things and so on I just stop for a bit I go to the diff totally different place of my zoo to look at it and to think of the plants for the future uh, so sometimes it really takes a while for me to build and I wish I was more efficient because then there will be more videos on my channel and i probably be more cohesive with my uploads but i am sure that by now you guys are used to that that i am sort of like hopping here and there with one video two videos there one video here <laughs> so you know the drill i've been talking about the plants and adding them and i forgot to tell you something that i really wanted to tell you uh, the thing that i am obsessed about the new hostel plants from the free update they are so amazing i love those plants so much huge shout out to the person who made them who designed them from the frontier te team because oh my god they look so good and i think that they suit to this habitat so well like next to those water sections i made sure to add a lot of those and if you have your own plant palette that you like to use in your builds definitely add this this plant to your uh to your palette because it is simply gorgeous what I also wanted to mention before we'll talk more about the wolverine and some fun facts about this animal is that if you will see the back of this enclosure and the buildings that are there uh, like uh, exterior of the buildings maybe not an interior because the interior is pretty finished but if you'll see that and will think oh this looks quite plain and unfinished you would be very correct <laughs> this is because i simply uh, didn't want to like waste more one more evening at like finishing it uh, because i simply add, plan to add a third building there because we have there a uh, the shelter for the wolverines one shelter for the red deers and we also have the big third building for the vicent uh, and when i will add this in there uh, i will sort of finish it and make it all pretty make it or make sense because right now it sort of doesn't make any sense so yeah those are the plans for the near future and by the way you guys are often helping me with pronouncing different things uh, just as you help me with the oceania and not oceania because this was also a debate do you pronounce the name of this animal vicent or wisent because i've checked before actually recording my videos on this pack and uh, a lot of pronunciation for example in on YouTube videos and so on, they use the word Vicent, uh, but then when I was watching, you know, different people covering the new pack, like videos and so on, almost all of them said Vicent or something like this. And I was so confused because I am, you know, uh, I don't know if I am the one who's right or them or any 
I don't know, just tell me down in the comments. <laughs> okay, but let's finally talk more about the Wolverine. So the Wolverine is the largest land-dwelling species of the Mastelids family. And if you didn't know, the Mastelids are weasels, badgers, otters, martens and wolverines. Uh, so it is closely related to uh, animals that we already have in the game like badgers and otters. The Wolverine has a reputation for ferocity and strength out of proportion to its size, with the documented ability to kill prey many times larger than itself. It is said to be able to kill animals like deers or even smaller moose, so wow, it is super impressive. Wolverines have an incredible sense of smell and hearing. Uh, they use the senses together to locate prey and they can also detect hibernating animals through the snow and dig them out for food. What is really interesting is that if the Wolverine takes down a large kill, and is unable to eat the whole animal, it will bury the carcass in the snow to keep it for later, uh, thus preventing the meal similar to how freezer keeps our food frozen. It lives in such a cold climate that sometimes the food can even freeze, uh, but it has such a sharp teeth and powerful jaw that it can actually eat, eat the frozen carcasses. They are very territorial and use their smell, their scent to mark their territory and the smell is said to be very bad that it gave them a nickname of the skunk bear, although they are not connected to bears anyway, but yeah, that was just a nickname. Each Wolverine's color patterns uh, are unique. Uh, just like our thumb print, uh, they have unique colorations like prints on their bodies. And I feel like Planet Zoo did it well, like recreated it well, because we have this sort of different, like those colorations. There's a red one, there's sort of like a beige one, there's a white one. So, so yeah, they really did an amazing job recreating that. And what they also recreated really well are those big uh, feet that the wolverines are known for. Uh, their feet can spread to twice their normal size to act like snowshoes during the winter. And this is all when it comes to the fun facts about the wolverines and this is also all when it comes to the video but don't turn it off quite yet because there are cinematic shots coming to show you everything that I've built in this episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, give this video a big thumbs up down below and of course leave me a nice comment, tell me what you think about our new habitat. If you like to support the channel a little bit extra, you can do it with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!